good morning all introduction about r plus studies which we can say right i'm not really going to go through quite a lot of slides instead i'm going to go through software etap and to an extent ieee 1584 and i guess like you might be aware of what is ieee 1584 latest trends or like latest news about ieee 1584 all right ieee 1584 dot 1 2022 is the latest news i'm not really sure whether you are aware of it or not probably take it up and share the screen i triple e 1584.1 that's what i'm googling it if you're not aware that's the standard which came very recently i triple e 1584.2022 even the peoples those who are in the market probably has been slightly misguided by this i triple e 1584 is something different and many people thought that IEEE 1584 2018 has been revised now, but that's not true. Let's search that also. That's still 2018, that's still a valid statement. Many people thought that the standard is obsolete now. Answer is no. IEEE 1584 2018, this is IEEE guide for performing or hazard calculations. The standard is active at this moment. This is not superseded by the latest standard which has been released recently. That is IEEE 1584.1, not IEEE 1584 2018 is still active. The R plus, the first standard from IEEE came in IEEE 1584 2002. That is the first standard with respect to R plus. And probably 16 years, I mean to say, we have been using the same standard IEEE 1584 2002. And after quite a lot of research, IEEE 1584 came in 2018 and that is still valid, right? There are quite a lot of uh, difference between IEEE 1584, 2002 and 2018, which I will take you through the simulation software. But one thing to understand, the standard is still active. It is not obsolete. Then we need to ask, what is the new standard, new development? So IEEE 1584 is a guide for performing our, our classic search calculations. IEEE 1584.1, is the guide for specification of a scope and deliverable requirements for an R plus hazard calculation study in accordance with IEEE 1584. Means what say this defines the scope and deliverable requirements, what the consultant has to deliver to the customer. From that perspective, it gives clear idea of what should be in customer scope, what should be in consultant scope what the consultant should ensure, et cetera, are defined in IEEE 1584.1. IEEE 1584.1 is not the standard to perform R plus study. This defines what's the scope of the customer. This defines what's the scope of the consultant. And it clearly says, what are all the deliverable requirements? If you are saying an R plus report, by probably looking at like quite a lot of substandard reports from various consultants on the R plus study, IEEE group, working group has made a, at least a base guideline of what other things has to be covered as a part of R plus. And IEEE 1584.1 is not the standard which is used to perform R plus study. For that, like you have to use IEEE 1584.2018. 2018. So both are valid standards. IEEE 1584.1 is the standard which you have to use to perform R plus. And 1584.1 gives a guidelines between the scope and deliverable clarifications between customer and the consultant. If you're talking about R plus study, IEEE 1584 is a standard that came in 2002 and then probably means it has been revised in 2018, like after a long, long, long time, when probably people felt IEEE 1584 2002 is like obsolete. And then like IEEE 1584 2022, probably this is a uh, Slightly different, not to confuse, this supersedes IEEE 1584.1-2013. So this is not the guide to perform studies. This defines a scope between the customer and consultant. Having said that, let's come back and probably ask a quick question. Why do we need R plus study? Why do we need to perform an R plus study? By means of performing an R plus study in NETAP or some other simulation software, personal safety is not ensured. That's the first point which we need to ensure, uh, like means we have to understand. If you want to ensure the protection of the persons, if you want to genuinely care about the peoples, buy all credit switch here, don't do live maintenance, 
no R plus study is required, your peoples are safe. Probably means what say R plus study needed, harmonic quality, etc. etc. Like I'm not really denying the requirement of R plus study. It should not be probably understood from that aspect. We have performed 20 R plus studies, and 95 percentage of the cases the customer has approached us. So we need to perform R plus study. I am asking question why? That's it. That's as simple as that. If I am asking related things, we will not get it. If you are asking transformer impedance, we will not get it. If you are asking uh, like means of say cable length, we will not get it. But they need a document to call the R plus report. I have seen quite a lot of R plus reports without relay settings, protection settings, and still claiming that means of say it is a safe to work or you have to wear PPE too or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Try to understand this. I mean, what say if you are not really doing a short circuit study to understand what is a short circuit current, and if you are not having a proper protection coordination settings, whatever the R plus study which you are doing is useless. And like I have seen quite a lot of times, like happens this probably means the consultant or protection engineer who goes probably do the relay coordination and discriminate, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and probably set like LV incomer at like 0.4 seconds or a 0.3 seconds fault clearing time. And probably means what say he tests and probably he leaves the site and the inspection comes and probably for that they need an R plus study report and they approach the uh, means what say consultant who is performing an R plus study. That consultant comes and performs and probably seeing that like incident energy is beyond 40 calories per centimeter square and they are recommending instantaneous protection at an income. And probably means I'm not really sure whether the company adopts that instantaneous protection at site or probably leaving it to existing settings. But there are cases has been reported because of this R plus study, they have made the incomer setting as an instantaneous to reduce the incident energy. Incomer setting as an instantaneous just to clear the fault quickly so that the incident energy is less. Now tell me what could be the impact of this. The person who is performing an R plus study is enabling instantaneous protection in the incomer to reduce the incident energy. What could be the impact of it? Losing the coordination. If there is a fault in the outgoing feeders, your incomer trips, coordination, protection coordination and R plus studies are conflict with each other. We have to understand that logic by default. Means to say, if you want that only the faulty person to be isolated and if you want to discriminate and if you are giving enough time grading as per IEEE 242, obviously incomer will clear the bus fault at later time only because you need to maintain the coordination with the downstream that increases the fault clearing time that increases the incident energy that increases the personal protective equipment requirements and 99 percentage of the time i mean so to say the safety consultants those who are not knowing what is short circuit study and relay coordination are performing an r plus if i am wrong probably go and check it in the market right so this is most 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 important thing which you need to understand short circuit study and relay coordination study is your responsibility if you are performing an R plus study, you cannot recommend an instantaneous protection just to reduce the PPE requirements or incident energy or whatever it is. Safety is important, but at the same time, protection coordination is also important. Losing the protection of the production industry just for a fault in any one of the outgoing feeder and tripping the incomer is nowhere logical. Nowhere logical. And this people will understand only when there is a fault happens and the incomer trips. Then they will find out another consultant. Right and saying like I mean, for say what what's the issue? Do you try to find it out. So you need to be very very careful, and it's a responsibility of us. When I say us, it is a responsibility of the electrical engineering community to understand productivity or a profit versus safety. That's what we are exactly doing in our study. So I means what say then like you need to be probably a bit careful. So I means what say there are like quite a lot of mitigation methods are there. And like probably somebody also put up in arc sensors, etc, etc. Like I'm not denying, I always happy to adopt any technology which is coming new. But like means to say, like when you're adopting a technology, you need to also understand like who is the people, those who are actually going to operate at site. It's not the engineer who is sitting in a sophisticated air conditioner room and deciding what technology to be used, probably in a means of say 50 year old process industry. And probably means for 30 years, the same person is sitting in operation maintenance and that. And like arc sensors, also there are issues where it is reported mall operation of the arc sensors. What I mean by that, one mall operation, like means I'm, I'm trying to look at the, the conflict between this point. Why I have to go for an arc plus? 
as i told if you are going for an arc related switch gear and if you are not taking a live maintenance then probably arc plus ready itself not needed your i means what's a plant is safe then why i have to go for an arc plus ready i feel my process is important even a small interruption of power outage i will not be able to tolerate i have a pharma industry i have like means of say some polytronic components are uh, uh, ic i mean so to say chip industry chip manufacturing industry embedded system manufacturing industry so like means if the power outage probably the loss is huge so i don't want to tolerate even a single second power outage that's where probably means so to say we are trying to take live maintenance risking the life of the people and ensuring the availability and reliability where we are talking about i mean so to say uh, wearing ppe and doing a live maintenance to ensure that the power supply is available for all other feeders and i am switching off only this particular feeder that that's where we are going for this which means why do we need an arc plus ready we need an arc plus ready when live maintenance is required and when we want to ensure the reliability and availability is higher and on the opposite side like we are saying that we are recommending arc sensors and probably means to say take the statistics of what's the number of mall operations of the arc the sensors and if arc sensor picks probably trips the incumber and probably means as a total total outage of the power for not really a fault right so it's it's important like there are quite a lot of misconceptions which are there arc plus ready that has to be essentially like means to say i am looking at this way before i probably 1584 2002 means do we think that like there is no uh, means to say arc plus uh, uh, hazards or the people are not dead or probably the people are safe absolutely no that time there is no something called nothing called arc rated switch gear people are doing maintenance people are doing live maintenance even if you are not doing a live maintenance the switch gear is not arc rated 2002 itp 1584 came with requirements by the time the specifications are start slowly migrating from switch gears to arc rated switch gears and arc rated switch gear that is 0.1 second 0.3 seconds 0.5 seconds 1 second or creating for 3 seconds like there are quite a lot of debates and means for say soft duration itself limited to 2 seconds as per IEEE 1584 2002 so do we need like arc rated switch gear for a 3 seconds there are quite a lot of questions it increases the cost and probably people also like means for say consultant to get a job probably keep saying like means for say if you do only arc plus ready your i mean for say safety of your industry is ensured etc we need to also probably slow down something ppe is the last mechanism of your safety like means was when i genuinely care somebody i will say rather than saying that take risk fail uh, means was a hit and an injury and probably means was a wear ppe so that the damage is limited right so means what say if i am damn sure if i go by that highway if i will meet an accident then please avoid that highway right if you really care about the safety and like means to say due to unavoidable situation you have to travel and there is a higher probability that uh, the accident can happen in the highway then probably ppe comes but ppe is the last line defense item probably means to say now there is a trend like perform arc plus ready recommend ppe and even i mean uh, this ppe manufacturing companies also put up like quite lot of videos and images in internet to threat the people wear ppe etc etc and like if you are wearing a 40 calorie per centimeter square ppe just to wear once before recommending just to wear i am not really asking you to wear and work there at site wear 40 calories per centimeter square ppe once sitting in your ac comfortable room and then recommend to somebody else it's it's, it's extremely tough like only when you wear that then you can understand that pain of it when you are performing an arc plus study perform short circuit studies find out the short circuit currents perform the short circuit studies for a various possible operating configurations with the grid with the local generation with the possible of grid and local generations with only local generation with the local generation if three generators are there with the two generators with three generators etc all the cases list down the short circuit current list down all the most all the all the possible operating configuration then probably means for see if it is an existing plant collect the existing relay settings check the coordination is available or not check the arc flash for all the operating modes all possible operating mode and check whether the incident energy what is the incident energy etc let me tell like what is arc flash what is the incident energy like i am not really going to what is arc flash google it you will get what is arc flash i am talking about the terminology called incident energy what is this incident energy incident energy is the energy which is dissipated during an arc inside a switch gear which comes out and probably the incident energy at the center of the arc will be like extremely extremely high because of that arc fault the temperature rises pressure increases the equipment inside that switch gear probably means for say come out with a heavy speed so i mean so to say this can harm not this can this will harm the people so those who are 
standing in front of when it comes when such an arc fault happens this incident energy is decided by what a simple rule we know i square t that's energy right like we might have studied in our schools also even if not in college h is equal to i square r p i square r p that's a heat energy developed right and like leaving r here like h like means here we take like the energy developed is like i square t what is that i i is that arc current what is the t t is the fault clearing time higher the current definitely higher the incident energy even if the current remains same higher the time higher the energy so incident energy is directly proportional to square of the current and directly proportional to fault clearing time if you keep coordinating fault clearing time at the upstream will be extremely high the incident energy will be more and this incident energy higher incident energy results in obviously higher ppe requirements and higher ppe requirements like i mean so said two aspects and probably people also think from other way around if you wear ppe people think that they are safe is it true if i am wearing a ppe the actual incident energy the worst case come is like 35 36 calories per centimeter square i am wearing 40 calories per centimeter square ppe and i am standing with probably showing my this one like this in front of the switch gear or happens inside right and it's probably coming out and it's hitting me directly do you think that i will be safe it reduces the impact <laughs> it doesn't eliminate the impact when you are driving in two wheeler people are asking you to drive with a helmet and people are asking you to wear a seat belt when you are driving a car it doesn't mean that you will not have any impact but the impact will be minimized same thing to ppe also eliminate it doesn't eliminate the impact it minimizes the impact and what is the guaranteed minimum uh, value of this ppes any idea means if i am wearing a ppe with an affordable or like i mean so say that meets the requirement of this ppe classifications still there will be something happens to me and what is what is that impact and probably means this is where you need to that that's an important number and probably means those who are not really aware of what is that let's put some images even if you are wearing ppe then probably means what say you might be facing a second degree burn even if you are wearing ppe you are subject to you are subject to second degree burn right you are subject to second degree burn that's not like uh, we cannot say it is no impact so pp is not protecting you it is limiting the damage so having said that let me probably open it up also in the meantime it up so we will we will talk a uh, little more uh, from the other perspective also so i have performed the short circuit for various operating conditions are all possible operating conditions and i have identified the fault clearing time with the help of existing relay settings for all the switch gears for all the operating then probably means so say the r plus is a simple you know the current and probably there is a little difference between bolted fault current and arc fault current what is bolted fault current and what is arc arc fault current but i that's what i am telling i will not even recommend 40 calories per centimeter square like the people those who are recommending we have to ask them to wear for 24 hours then then they will not definitely recommend the fault occurs without any fault impedance or without any arc resistance that's the bolted fault and probably if you look at one of the key assumption in iec 60909 one of the key assumption in iec 60909 is fault happens with zero fault resistance that's a bolted fault right that means i am assuming that if it is three phase fault r phase y phase b phase touches together without any fault impedance in between and if it is a single to ground fault that is also possibility that single to ground fault can be bolted fault it is falling directly on the ground without any fault impedance then what is fault with the fault impedance say example a branch is probably falling on the tree or a rock which has a resistance that's a fault with a fault impedance then like what is an arc what's a fault and what's an arc Right, that that itself we have not answered the question. Right, what is fault? What is an arc? I IEC six zero nine zero nine gives a beautiful definition for a fault. So this is an intentional or accidental conductive path between two or more conductive paths or live paths brings the potential difference between this as zero or close to zero. That that's what IEC six zero nine zero nine beautifully defines what is fault. So that's a conductive path between two or more. Parts, conductive parts, right? So R phase, R ground, R phase, and Y phase, R R Y B, like whatever it is. So means what? Say it is uh, like probably means what? Say uh, there is a conductive path which happens accidentally or intentionally, like intentional, like if you test it in Kima lab or CPR lab in India, that that's intentional. So this probably reduces the voltage close to zero or to zero. If it is equal to zero, then it is bolted fault. If it is close to zero, that means like 
uh, still there is something in between. So what, like I'm I'm putting it like the other way around. Like let me check whether I have the plug points between me. Yes, it is. Right. Like I used to always say this. Like if I'm removing this, and probably means if I'm moving the hands very closer to this, uh, still I am safe. Probably I cannot move my hands very close to this 400 kV line or a 760 kV line. Like how much close I have gone to 230 volt 50 hertz system. Because means what see when I have two conductors means what see the insulation in between not necessarily has to behave in the same way for a different voltages. So means what see if I am having like two 400 volt systems like this means 230 volt 230 volt the voltage between this is like 400 volt. If I am keeping this this separation, that's more than enough. This voltages are not capable of ionizing the air in between. But if I am keeping the two conductors. 400 bar root 3 kV R phase, 400 bar root 3 kV Y phase, and the voltage between these two is 400 kV. If I'm keeping this, what happens? 400 kV R phase, 400 kV Y phase. That means the phase to ground voltage is 400 bar root 3. But if I'm keeping these two conductors like this close, what happens? It ionizes the air in between, and that air starts conducting. It's not a fault. It's an arc that ionizes the air, and there is conductive path but the conductive path is not with the zero impedance, the conductive path with some fault impedance. That's not Corona, not a, uh, means to make it very clear that that's not necessarily Corona, Corona is slightly different. So this ionizes the air and probably the current flows through this, right? That's the real reason why I cannot move my hands very close to this. I mean, for say a 400 kV system that, that pretty close, right? So having said that, uh, I mean, for say, what is an arc and what is a fault? Fault, when we say bolted fault, there is no resistance or the impedance in between these two conductive parts. But what is an arc? There is an arc, which means there is a conductive path, but that is not conductive path with the zero impedance, that conductive path with fault impedance. That fault impedance, if it is an air and if it is ionized, that's an arc or the resistance, right? That's the reason why, like, uh, if you have done distance protection, you might be doing something correct, right? Like, I mean, for say, arc resistance, and like, what's the capability of the distance protection to detect the faults, even if there is a fault with an arc resistance? So having talking about like short circuit current gives the bolted fault current. I Means what say protection coordination gives what's the fault clearing time for the given fault current. But like IEEE 154 gives if this is the voltage, this is the short circuit current, arc current. Arc current will not be same as a bolted fault current. Arc current will drastically reduce with respect to uh, means what say less voltages if you take like 40 kilohams or uh, means 40 kilohams voltage fault current may come down to 20 kilohams or current or even less right depends upon the voltage depends upon the configurations right so having said that you need to work out like what are the different electrode configurations what's the uh, i mean for the voltage of the system what's the size there are different electrode configurations your switch gear vertical conductor with the barrier horizontal conductor this three could be applicable for your indoor switch gears. Vertical open air, horizontal open air, such electrode configurations, like five different electrode configurations are defined in IEEE 1584 2018. This will result in a different arc current and the incident energy for the same bolted fault current. Like if everything remains same, still it is absolute important you find out what is the, I mean, configuration of your electrode electrode configurations and you find out what's the short circuit current and how it is converted to your current depends upon this electrode configurations and along with this you were when the current arc current changes fault clearing time also changes if you have an inverse relay if you have an inverse relay if you have an inverse relay like an inverse definite minimum time inverse relay if the fault current changes the fault clearing time also changes it is not necessary that sometimes, I mean, for say the lower arc current results in lower incident energy, there could be some possibility where slightly, I mean, for say less current will have a higher incident energy. That's the reason why like the standard recommends you have to check for all, all possible operating configurations. What I mean by that I means for say, assume that when you are operating with the grid, the fault current is 40 kilohams, arc current is 20 kilohams. And for that, my relay picks up in instantaneous or a definite time. Assume that definite time is, say, example, 200 milliseconds. But when grid is not available, when the system is running with a diesel generator, the fault current is, say, example, 25 kilohams. And our current is, say, example, 12.5 kilohams. And your 
means instantaneous or a definite time production is set at like example 16 kilograms when you are operating in a dg you will not be able to detect this fault in instantaneous or a definite time this goes to the inverse region or probably if you are talking about the lv releases lsig it goes to l region and the time is higher time is exponentially higher because the definite time brought down the time drastically low so even the reduction in current can have increased let through energy increased uh, means what to say incident energy and it may need higher pp requirements so don't go blindly by looking at the maximum current and conclude it try to evaluate all possible combinations even reduction in current will have the possibility that higher incident energy that's because of higher fault current where the relay has not really picked up in the definite time or instantaneous so when i say like lv systems lsig long shot instantaneous and ground so this s and i the error band is like about 10 percentage or 20 percentage in the lv releases so you need to be model that circuit breaker also carefully so why i am stressing this point again and again because most of the time uh, i mean so say we are blindly assuming the fault current blindly assuming the fault clearing time and performing an r plus if you are performing such an analysis it is as good as not performing the analysis you need to model the right circuit breaker because relay operating time is something different total fault clearing time is something different your relay gives a trip command but the circuit breaker opening time could be different so you have to be model relay circuit breaker carefully by default if you are leaving the medium voltage circuit breaker that will have an operating time of 10 milliseconds in eta which means you are compromising on r plus let me probably stress only that important important point so if i am probably taking a hv breaker many people will leave this as it is and if you look at this fault clearing time is like 10 milliseconds and typically your medium voltage at like 6.6 kv or 11 kv will take 40 to 50 milliseconds breaker opening time so be carefully collect what is the make model number of circuit breaker even if it is a medium voltage circuit breaker and model it properly with its breaker opening time without which what you are giving is of illogical going with a by default value in terms of circuit breaker or like if you are going with the release carelessly with respect to this informations right what's the minimum delay all this informations then that is not doing as good as probably not plus and most of the time if you approach any lb uh, systems uh, predominantly the releases are not standardized there are like very local manufacturers might be available that karu may not be available in the internet you may not be able to model but like you need to collect all this informations necessarily for it if you want to perform like real good or plus study then what we should keep minimum delay in eta for circuit breakers that you have to take it from the library of the circuit breaker itself in our youtube channel thank you so much for joining